Welcome to the good, the bad, and the pure evil. It is one of my favorite times of year, Halloween. For Halloween week, I am hoping to bring tales and legends from the birthplace of Halloween. My home country, the Green Isle of Ireland. Before we start, hit the subscribe and like button and ring the absolute hell out of that bell. Sit back, drink a pumpkin spice latte and let's start. By now the evenings grow dark, the leaves have turned and that once warm breeze now a bitter gust. Bones stick from the ground, webs cover the windows and at the door sits our dear old orange friend, Mr or Mrs. Jack-o'-lantern. But where did the Jack-o'-lantern come from? And what is its purpose? Well, let me tell you. A blacksmith a long time ago lived in the land of Ireland, and he loved to drink, but was a mean drunk. One day he came across an old man in need of help, and Stingy Jack actually helped him. It said the old man was an actual angel, and because of his kindness, the angel granted Stingy Jack three wishes. Each wish, Jack did harm to others. Disgusted, the angel banned him from heaven, never ever allowing to be entered. With this and his continuous stealing, lying and cheating, his fame reached the ears of the little red man down below, the devil. So old Nick didn't believe of such a mortal. He clambered out of his hellhole and found Stingy Jack. Impressed, the devil wanted Stingy Jack down with him in the land of eternal inferno. Jack wasn't keen on dying or claiming his soul. So he did a last request. Feeling generous, the devil agreed. Stingy Jack asked to go to the local pub for a drink. The pair drank and drank, and when Tab was called, good old Stingy Jack hadn't a penny to his name. But he had a plan. He suggested the devil morph into a coin. He'd use this to pay the tab. Then he'll distract the bartender and take back the coin. Devil changes back and the two tip on to hell. The devil found this very crafty and devious so he agreed. But once a coin, Jack put the devil into his pocket next to a cross and so trapping the devil in the pocket. To free, the devil made a deal. Depending on your story, the, de uh, the deal with the devil would spare Jack's soul for a year or ten years, there's even a tale that it was a night. Either way, the devil agreed and left Jack alone. Once the deal was up, back came the devil for Jack's soul. Again, Jack had a last request. This time was for an apple at the top of the tree. Knowing the fate that awa awaited Jack, the devil agreed and up the tree he went. Now again, depending on the tale you've heard, Jack either carved a cross into the tree or circled the trunk of the tree with crosses. And so the devil was trapped once again. This time the deal with the devil would never take Jack's soul. Stuck in the tree, the devil agreed and he was free. He cursed Jack out of it and vanished. Not too long after this, Jack had too much of the drink and he died. He went to the gates of heaven where he was reminded of the ban. So down he went to the gates of hell. Here the devil waited to not allow Stingy Jack in and damn him to eternity to roam the mortal world alone. The children's story tells the death the devil threw a Jack an ember from the fires along with a turnip and Jack hollowed the turnip out. He placed the ember inside to light his way and the grown-up story says the devil hurled an ember at Jack which lodged in his head having him a phantom walking the earth mournfully forevermore 
with the light of hell burning from his eye sockets. See, back in the day of the Celts, they believed your soul, your life, was in your head. So taking someone's head meant claiming their soul. This story scared the absolute hell out of people. So at Halloween time, they carved turnips and potatoes. We didn't have pumpkins. And put a light in them. This was placed outside to ward off Stingy Jack and other evils that roamed the night. This tradition was passed from parents to children and taken with those who emigrated. And in the US, seeing a pumpkin, the tradition was improved. The tradition has even changed today, hollowing from the bottom and not the top to have it last longer, and having a battery candle for safety, and using not just orange pumpkins, but green and white. And that's why we have jack-o'-lanterns, all thanks to Stingy Jack. Hit that like and subscribe button, ring the hell out of that little bell, and join me tomorrow for another Halloween tale from the birthplace of Halloween, Ireland.